Hey everybody, the Nick here. The Nick. Today I have a review for you of the TAC Force Speedster model Fantasy Line TF801. The Fantasy is obviously to be a uh, 007 operator. Uh, high speed, low drag, black blade, and these flames are a nice touch. This knife is on loan from a subscriber, the Prof Nolan, a gear reviewer who is literally just starting out. Check out his channel and subscribe for more. Size comparison, of course, here you have your Spyderco Endura 4, US Quarter, Dime, another Dime, your Indian Head Penny Knife, Apple, a Jack, and Apple Jack. So now let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly on the cell knife. Uh, first thing about the good is the price. I got this baby along with a pink twin for the fiance and this uh, dandy little shop in here for about 25 bucks. So we're looking in the same price competition with the uh, Z Hunter, but the finish on this one is a little bit better. It is also made, here we go, it is also made in the China and designed by USA. Like uh, my first Terrible Knife of the Month Club knife, also by Tac Force, I believe. And uh, it's got some serrations that are good for cutting packaging twine. And unlike your Z Hunter, they are all roughly pointing in the same direction and nearly uniform in spacing. Uh, the liner lock here, see if you can see that, is about 50%, eh, which is not bad for the price point, certainly. The blade is just under three inches, so it should be legal in most places, except for, say, Chicago. Sorry, guys. The clip is uh, sturdy and unpainted with um, <coughs> holes that remind me of uh, my Graham Razel. Um, excuse me, I need a moment. Come here, baby. No, not you. I'm talking to my Razel. Lastly, your screws here are Torx. And uh, disassembling this baby won't violate the warranty because uh, this doesn't come with any warranty or, frankly, guarantees for that matter. So that's good. Uh, now for your bad. The ergos on this knife are pretty bad. The cutout on the back here is actually really smooth. There is some jimping, but there's no jimping on the blade itself. So if you try to choke up, you're going to cut yourself on these freaking serrations. And I, I am not a smart man, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the pocket clip is uh, set for tip-down only carry in the right pocket, which, as you know, is the sixth deadly sin of knife design. The spring-assisted flipper here, uh, but the spring tension is not really strong enough to open it by itself. I'll demonstrate here. You see, it only springs out to about there. So you get to feel a little bit stronger flipping it with your finger here, but the spring assist does make it illegal in some areas. The steel frame weighs in at, let's see here, there, there you go, at the 4.4 ounces, so you're talking about quite a bit heavier, a full, a full ounce heavier than your Endura 4. You've got a seat belt cutter here, but uh, good luck maintaining it or sharpening it, and really, are you going to trust your, knife, your life to this knife? I mean, come on. The uh, flipper tab here is not too large, but you do always have this glass breaker down here which acts as a pocket pecker that points straight down in your pocket, since this is a uh, tip-down carry. And uh, a pocket pecker that can't even rise to the occasion is the worst kind of pocket pecker. I didn't test this, the glass breaker on this knife because, let's be honest, any pane of glass is going to cost more than this whole freaking knife. Lastly, the ugly. The blade is serrated about an inch, an inch and uh, three quarters past the tip, and the serrations do come over this thumb stud. So if you were slicing with serrations for some reason, yeah, the thumb stud would get in the way, but the serrations kind of make it not that great of a slice to begin with. The blade is uh, proudly labeled 440 steel, right there, and it's a black blade both of which are junk, as you know. The uh, black blade and the fire paint job don't hold up too well in your pocket, so you end up with a blade that not only feels cheap, but also looks cheap. It will not give you joy to whip this baby out. 
Final verdict is, uh, don't buy this knife. Uh, don't even gift it, unless you never want to see the person again. So there you go. Nick Shabazz's review of the TAC Force TF-801. I hope you don't get burned by this knife. Eh? Eh? And, uh, <laughs> anyway, hi mom, and uh, have yourselves a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye now.